When you think of Sega mascots, what comes to your mind? Sonic the Hedgehog probably, maybe some of you will answer Alex Kidd or Professor Soban or even Opa Opa. Although, small tidbit, Opa Opa actually got his name from a Brazilian expression of happiness. So I guess its name is technically Opa Opa. Anyway, I'm sure you've all heard about these characters by now. But there's one Sega mascot I've never seen anyone mention. One Sega mascot that although short-lived, seems to have left quite an impact on gamers. And that mascot is this guy. Now, I'm sure most of you are wondering who the heck is this? Well, this is Sapu Chulé. Sapu Chulé is a comic book character created by Brazilian artist Paulo José. Paulo began his career during the 1960s at the age of 17. Here, he would eventually be contacted by one of the animation pioneers in Brazil, where he would go on to draw cartoons for Monica. Yes, we're talking about her again. And he also worked on, uh, rice commercials? Yeah, sure, why not? But by the 1980s, he had established contacts with Hanna-Barbera, animating for shows like The Snorks. It was at around this time he'd launched a comic book series called Sapu Chulé, which roughly translates to Smelly Foot Frog or Frog with Smelly Feet. Yeah, I know, it's a weird concept, but if it helps, the character is apparently based on a Brazilian children's limerick. Anyway, I have to admit, I'm not familiar with the comic books. To my knowledge, they were never sold in Portugal and it seems even in Brazil it only enjoyed a moderate success, because I had a hard time finding any scans of the comic book. However, it did spawn a fairly popular toy of the frog in the 1990s, where you could remove his footwear and it would actually smell like feet, which I still don't get it. Then again, this was the 90s, and gross-out humor was all the rage. So, I guess that's what they were going for. This, however, was an Afortec toy, whom you may remember was the official Sega distributor in Brazil during this time. And just like how they signed Monica on board to promote their master system, they wanted in on the Sapu Chulé action, spawning three games for it. All three of these games launched in 1995, which was pretty late into the console's life cycle. I mean, let's not forget the Master System launched in the US in 1986, and by 1995 the Sega Saturn was already out in the Western world, so the games were already two generations behind. Most likely this was done because the Master System was still pop in Brazil during this time, but also because it was easier to make Master System games than when compared to Sega Saturn or even Sega Genesis games. So, with all this said, how are the games? Well, for one thing, Tectoy once again took the moniker route, meaning they chose to take existing games and change their sprites. However, whereas all the Monica games were taken from the same series, ensuring the gameplay and world rules remain consistent throughout each title, the Sapu Chulé games were taken from three different titles, by three different developers and from three different genres. So, yeah, don't expect any consistency here. Now, I couldn't find any official dates for which of these games came out first. But if I had to guess, I would say Sapu Chulé vs Os Invasores do Brejo, or Sapu Chulé vs The Invaders of the Swamp, mostly because it apparently came bundled with a scratch and sniff sticker that smells like, you guessed it, feet. I assume this was the first game to be released because it sort of sounds like the extra promotional effort you take when launching a new product, but I could be wrong. Anyway, this game is just a sprite swapped version of Psycho Fox. You start out as a titular frog, but you can also play as his friends, but none of the other sprites have changed. It's a bit of a lazy change, but hey, it's Psycho Fox, so at least the game was good. Next up, we have Sapu Chulé SOS Lagoa Poluída, or Sapu Chulé SOS Polluted Lagoon. 
and as you can see, it's a shmup, and I do love shmups. But in fact, this game is a sprite swap of Astro Warrior, which was an early Master System game that although a bit generic, made for a surprisingly fun title. I should also point out, Astro Warrior was basically a ripoff of Astro Force for the Famicom, an early shmup for the console, which is a really fun shmup. I used to play it all the time as a child on my Famiclone. Anyway, back to Sapchule. This version seems to have had a bit more effort put into it, as this time they changed the main character sprite as well as most of the enemies. So now, instead of fighting aliens, you're shooting down boots, half-eaten apples and cotton swabs. In a way, it kind of reminds me of Twinbee. The blackness of space was also changed with this lime green background, which I feel does the game no favors. Oddly enough, the game is still in English, including its infamous English dialogues. However, they changed the name of the bosses and now call each level a lake. As in, the English word for lake, not the Portuguese word. I... I don't get it. Lastly, we have Sapu Chulé, o Mestre do Kung Fu, or Sapu Chulé, the Kung Fu Master. This game is a sprite-swapped version of Kung Fu Kid, a game which a lot of Master System fans swear by, but personally, I never really cared for it. Anyway, in this one, we're back to only having the main character being swapped, but at least, it does seem like the most detailed 8-bit interpretation of the frog yet. In fact, it might be a little too detailed, as his art style completely clashes with the rest of the game and his enemies. I don't really have a lot to say about this one. I always found the original game to be average at best, but like I said, I've met a lot of Master System fans that swear by this game, so maybe I'm the one in the minority here. And that's it! This was the last video game outing for Smelly Foot Frog, or at least the last outing on a Sega console. I assume by 1995 there really wasn't that much steam left for the Master System even in Brazil, and producing Saturn or Mega Drive games was likely too expensive. The funny thing is, it seems that these three games are the main reason why the character is even remembered at all, even in Brazilian websites. As even in Brazilian websites, the games would always be the first search terms to crop up, followed by the toy and lastly the comic book itself. With that said, it seems that just last month, in March of 2019, an attempt was made at resurrecting the character, with the release of a new comic book. Again, I haven't really read it, but I will say I like this new art style a little better than the original one. But that's just me. I'll admit I don't really get this character, but for a brief time he really was one of the most unique Sega Master System mascots. Clearly not as popular as Monica, but he definitely left his own unique impression. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Stika's Retro Corner. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe and share this video. All that fun social media stuff. And if you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon, where you'll find all kinds of awesome rewards. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye!